wow, what a beautiful and yet odd looking fruit. Believe it or not, it's a fig, but it's not one of the usual type of figs you see growing in a San Joaquin Valley. It's from the rare Ficus dameropsis. Hi, my name is Jeff and welcome to my exotic garden. Today we are going to talk about this beautiful tree, the Ficus dameropsis I have growing on the north side of my house. Actually, I have four of these trees on my tiny 4,000 square foot lot. That's why it's so shady in here. But first, before we get to that, if you like this channel, go ahead and hit that like, the subscribe button, and the notification bell. If you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comment section below. So yeah, let's take a look at this exotic tree. The Ficus dameropsis, a large-leafed, tropical-looking fig tree, is native to the mountains of New Guinea, where it's found as high as 9,000 feet in elevation. The Ficus dameropsis is somewhat hardy for a tropical species in that it does take a few degrees of frost, at least in my garden. As I mentioned, I have four of these monsters growing in my tiny backyard in Modesto, California. Uh, the only way that I can get these things to grow uh, and still grow other things is to prune the lower branches, creating a huge canopy some 15 feet in the air. Take a look at this uniquely spotted little leaf I have grown on this Ficus dameropsis. Our water is quite hard and during the hot weather, the leaves transpire, especially in the morning, literally dripping with moisture. Here you see another fig, um, but yeah, here's the high canopy. I love it because you come here in the hot part of the day and it feels at least 10 degrees cooler due to the canopy and the transpiration of the leaves. One sad thing about the Ficus dameropsis here in the United States is that it's very difficult to propagate. The flowers not having the necessary wasp to pollinize, it just doesn't get pollinized and so therefore you don't get any seeds. Taking cuttings is difficult as they just, the uh, cuttings don't scar off and when you make a cutting, it tends to weep for a long, long time. Uh, I've been experimenting with uh, air layering and I found a really cool variety way to, to air layer. Uh, I will be doing a video on that uh, soon. And you see here's one of my experimentations. I'll be doing a video on uh, how I uh, propagate Ficus dameropsis. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you'll, you'll get notified when I do release that video. So, as I mentioned, the native population in New Guinea use the leaves as food, uh, especially the young shoots. I, I believe they use them about this stage and they use it to hold meat uh, such as pork and yams and the like. Uh, yeah, I, I've never tried it, uh, but I can see where they're coming from. Here we see that another one of those spotted leaves uh, due to our hard water. It's almost artsy looking. I kind of like it. I don't know how healthy it is for the trees. It doesn't seem to hurt them, but they look almost painted on. Here is some more of the scarring after I pruned the tree. And I did that probably a year ago. You see that it just does not, the cuts do not heal over. Uh, it's frustrating. Uh, and I'm sure that has to do with the one of the reasons why it's so difficult to propagate these through air layering or cuttings. I have been successful though. It takes a while and it's a three-step process. Here's an example of one of the uh, trees that I propagated using my special uh, air layering technique. It takes quite a while and as I mentioned it's a several step process. The trees like this, I understand they are very expensive. This size, I'm selling for a couple hundred bucks. And I'm sure it's due to the difficulty in propagation. So if you like this type of video, don't forget to hit the like, the subscribe button, and the notification bell. If 
you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comment section below. And you have a good day.